So the Pittsburgh Penguins played the first game of their 2016 Stanley Cup playoffs run uh, Wednesday night against the New York Rangers won 5-2. It was a crazy game. Earlier in the day at the morning skate, Marc-Andre Fleury skated in the starters net, left the ice first. Everyone's like, okay, Fleury's in net. We got this. He's playing. He's ready to go. Mm, he's amped up. But who should lead the team up to warm-ups? None other than Jeff Zadkoff. Yes, the same goalie who was the third goalie for the team who has not played in a game starting since February, has barely practiced because he can't find the ice time. This goalie was the backup to Matt Murray in the AHL last year. Now he's starting against Henrik Lundqvist in the Stanley Cup playoffs. You can imagine my nerves were, I was all over the place, a little bit shaky. And I would think the Penguins would come out trying to protect him, trying to play well. But no. The Penguins came out flat. They were terrible. Who should save the day? None other than Jet Zadkoff. Zadkoff was incredible on the night, stopping 35 to 37 shots. Just came out of nowhere. I don't think we'll see this performance again. I don't expect us to see it again. But it was nice while it lasted. And the Penguins won 5-2. And in a random change of events, Henrik Lindquist also got injured and Antti Ranta finished the game. Now, if you had money that Antti Ranta and Jess Hadkoff would be the goalies in game one, you are a genius because no one saw this coming. It was totally ridiculous. Uh, after Ranta went in, the floodgates just opened up. Penguins got four more goals in him after getting a fluky goal on Lundqvist after Lundqvist got a stick in the eye by his own teammate Mark Stahl, oh well, and Horny in the crease, bang, pops it in, and Lundqvist could probably barely see. Now Lundqvist was seeing a specialist today or yesterday. Um... So we'll have to wait to see how that goes before we find out more information for tomorrow. But the team did call up the third goalie, Magnus Helberg, from the AHL. So that could either just be some gamesmanship, like what Mike Sullivan did, because he knew that Fleur wasn't going to play, and he put him in it anyways. Or it could actually be a precaution. Lundqvist could actually be seriously injured with eye injuries. You never know. Um, an eye is quite serious. So we'll see. Hopefully he's okay. They didn't think he'd be too serious, but... They could, who knows, Ali Vignal could just be downplaying it and he could be putting games in ship back at McClellan because it's playoffs and that's what coaches do. And the Rangers thought they'd be playing Flurry, they prepared for Flurry, they got just Zadkoff, which in a way is good because they probably didn't have a book on Zadkoff. He doesn't have a lot of experience, he had no playoff experience. They probably didn't really know what to expect. Um, and so they were fooled and he fooled them and he played very well. And the Penguins didn't play well, they certainly didn't have a deserved win that game, but fortunes turned and they ended up winning. That beautiful shorthanded goal from Kunako when we were on the five on three, two players in the box at the same time. I'd never seen that before. Beautiful pass from Benino to Kunako. Kunako again just continues to impress. Comes out of nowhere. I'm loving this kid. Pops it in. That was effectively um, the game as it made 3 1 at that point. Just before that play, Ben Lovejoy made an incredible game saving save, something I thought I'd never say, which would have made it 2 2 instead of 3 1 at that point. Ben Lovejoy bats, basically there's a wide open net, the Rangers have the 5 3 power play, Ben Lovejoy blocks the shot and bats the puck out and down the ice, and that effectively sets up Kunako, and then away they go, well, Latang got the assist, but effectively that led to the whole play, and Ben Lovejoy saving the goal, who would have thought, you know, he did something, he did something good for once, but did you look at that? Justin Schultz only played five minutes. Um, I'm not really sure why. Mike Sullivan went with the 11-D-7, 11-forward, 7-D rotation, which in hindsight I think was a terrible idea because the defenseman didn't have any chemistry going. Especially since it was only Mattis' first game back, I would have just put him with Latang because that was his regular partner, and Latang's playing out of his mind right now. So you get him with someone who's feeling confident about his game, it would bring Mattis' game up as well. Um, having, but having all these mismatch of pairings, it just, it didn't work for me. Um, I know Sestito would be the other guy, but I mean, you play him five minutes anyways, it's pretty inconsequential. Uh, you, you barely have to play him or you would just call up someone else instead of him. He shouldn't even be up, but I, I don't like the whole 7D thing. I, I think it messed their heads. I don't think they should do it again, but I don't think the Penguins will come out as flat the last game either. Their starts have been an issue, but they have been able to bounce back and score, but it's not a long-term method for success. It's not really sustainable. They do need to come off hopping right off the gate, because when we play the better teams, like the Washingtons or Tampa Bay or whatever, they're going to come on you hard, and, you know, they can't afford to be, to be behind, so I would expect a better effort from the Penguins next game. If the Rangers are going to win a game, it would have been that one, because 
I don't think they'll dominate a game puck possession wise like they did that one. And even though the Penguins got dominated puck possession wise, Crosby still had a monster game, racking up three points. Latang still had two assists, setting up two goals and beautiful plays from behind the net. And Malkin looks like he's ready to come back soon. Matt is back, Ben is back practicing. So I think the ring just really blew an opportunity there. And I think this is going to be a short series. I, I said Pens in five. I still think that could happen. But if one quiz goes down, who knows, you know, it could uh, go either way. So uh, it, it could be it could be shorter if he goes down. But if he comes back and plays really well, it could be extended. Um, I still think the Rangers might be able to, to pull one out at home, uh, have their crowd behind them. They tend to have a good home record. So, by the way, the Penguins are wearing the third jerseys for the playoffs. How sick do they look? They look beautiful. Definitely the best jerseys in the playoffs, in my opinion. Uh, I mean, Chicago's are up there. New York's up there. But Pittsburgh's, whew, they look good. And this basically is say, stating the inevitable is that the Penguins are going to have these as their third jerseys next season. Hopefully they bring back the white and yellow, too, that they had from the 90s. Those were sick. I mean, it's the worst-kept secret in hockey. The fact they're wearing them for the playoffs basically signals to me that it's going to be their their jersey next year because the ones they have now are ugh, they're not good they're not good so um, that's all I have for this video what do you think of this video uh, do you think just that cough can keep this up I hope he can I'm not sure he can Fleury's practicing again today Murray has still not taken the ice which is a bad sign but the fact that Fleury's taking the ice and practicing shows me he's closer he's progressing and at least we know if Fleury messes up that cough can go in and play well but I don't think Fleury will so that's all I have for this video. Please like it if you like. Subscribe if you really like it. Share with all your friends. Tell everyone. And uh, I'll see you Sunday after the Penguins play tomorrow. And uh, yeah, because it's a cup, let's go Penguins.